The very first question of this uh, test is not one that we should answer right away. Remember, we always want to save whole passage questions for last, and that's because we've just maybe not read the passage at all, like I advocate, the no reading strategy, but even if we did read the passage, we're going to get more information as we do all of the other questions in this passage. And here especially, I think that that really helps us come up with some dumb summaries for what's going on. And there's different kinds of dumb summaries, depending on the kind of passage, depending on the kind of question, and even within this question, we can use a, a couple of different types to help us. So one thing is, you know, with the literature passage in particular, ask yourself, okay, who is it about? Who's the character? Who's the main character? In this case, it's the artist, right? The artist, the young artist, I guess, is the main character. Now, why is that helpful? Well, if we are given these choices that are supposed to be their own summaries of the passage, and it doesn't make the young artist the main character of the choice, then it's probably not good for the choice. So that, that to me, gets rid of choice A, because that seems to be making the professor the main character, and, and it's really not about him. Yes, he's there. Yes, he's speaking. But it's a simple question. Who's the main character? It's not the professor. So a summary should not make it seem like the professor is the main character either. That really does help. Now for the rest, we can start to say, okay, well, what's the vibe of the passage? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it mixed? Right? Because we have some, some choices here that have different vibes, uh, connotations. B, the struggles of a young artist conflicted about his values. So maybe that's a bit of a mixture. C, descent of a character into hopelessness and madness. That's very negative. And D, personal life of a young painter in relation to his art. That's uh, actually pretty neutral. And honestly, I would normally like that answer choice. It's very weak. The one I would definitely not like is choice C, descent of a character into hopelessness and madness. These are incredibly strong words. Madness, that's going insane. Is this character going insane? Absolutely not. At the end, he's definitely unhappy. He's saying, you know, it's very, uh, be patient, be patient. You know, he's vexed, he's frustrated. Um, but there's an end to patience at last. Be patient, but what money have I to buy a dinner with tomorrow? So he's, he's broke. And he goes on and, you know, kind of complains a little bit. But like, let's just look at the end here. Why do I worry and toil like a learner over the alphabet when I might shine as brightly as the rest and have money too, like them? Does that sound like an insane person, a mad person? No, he's also not hopeless. He's just kind of like frustrated. So this is a very strong choice and the dumb summary of our passage is definitely not this negative. So we can get rid of it. So as far as the other two, normally I would gravitate towards choice D because it's very vague. But we have to be careful here. Um, is it really about his personal life? I guess we're kind of learning that he's broke, but is he like dating anybody? Is who's Who are his friends? Who's his family? We're not really getting into his personal life. In fact, most of this thing is about just kind of him dealing with learning about art and then his relationship with the professor. I don't know that that really counts as his personal life. And in relation to his art, well, are we really talking about his art, a lot of times we're talking about other people's art, right? They're talking about the Flemish masters and Raphael. So like, I don't really remember his art being a major part of this either. Kind of like before when we said, who's the main character? Is it is it the artist or is it his art? Well, it's kind of him. And so that leaves us with B. And so there's a strong word here as well. Struggles of, struggles is a strong word, but conflicted about his values. We, we, we really want to be able to prove that conflict if possible. Now at the end, we see him being kind of negative and frustrated, right? Be patient, be patient. You know, there's an end to patience at last. Well, at the beginning here, remember the professor is talking about him, uh, talking to, telling him to be patient. Um, uh, let's see, more than once, you have talent, it'd be a shame if you waste it, you are impatient, um, and it goes on and on and on, be patient, and then here, the professor was partly right, so I guess that's positive, right? He's saying, oh, I agree with the professor, and then here he's ex exasperated and disagreeing with him. So there is a conflict here, specifically about that word patience. So that's going to be the answer. 
And I get that this is an old sounding passage. There's a lot of stuff in between these ideas and it's hard to understand all of it. But notice that the thing that we did need to understand is actually really understandable. Patience versus impatience. We understand that. Those are not hard words. Those are, those are not hard concepts. And they're repeated again and again. Main ideas are repeated ideas. So we can't worry about all the little stuff along the way that we don't understand. We have to trust that these main idea whole passage questions are really just about like the big ideas that do come up again and again that we're not going to miss. And dumb summaries, breaking things down into smaller, uh, stupider versions of what's going on is actually really helpful because it clears our mind. It lets us focus on the stuff that matters most and not worry about the stuff that we didn't understand. It usually doesn't matter.